Year 10 and 11, welcome to your English Literature Revision. Notice that the slide says that this is part two. I suppose it's actually the third video. Um, in order, you should watch the analysis of structure, the analysis of language part one, and this is the analysis of language part two. And we will be starting from stanza five in the poem. Okay, if you want, obviously, if you want the analysis of the first four stanzas, then uh, look to my other video. Okay. Okay, stanza five into stanza six. Again, uh, Wilfred Owen continues his use of personification in the opening line. He says, um, actually, actually, can I just uh, point out something here? There's different versions of this poem on the internet and in the anthology. Um, the version of the internet here, as you see, see, says pale flakes with lingering stealth. But actually, in the anthology, it is pale flakes with fingering stealth. So... Um, just be aware of that. Anyhow, the line is personification because it says that it, the you know the snow and the flakes are feeling for our faces. Once again, it's the idea. I mean, we've all been out in the cold and we know that it, it catches your cheeks, doesn't it? It catches your your face. Um, it's the idea again that the the snow and the flakes are undetected in in the word stealth, and but they can feel it. They, it's almost like the weather is touching them, and. We can see the vulnerability of the men here in the sense that it's gone straight for their face. Um, on the line 22, we cringe in holes. It's an animal-like state, cringing in a hole. It's almost like they aren't men anymore because of, <coughs> excuse me, because of what they are experiencing. Um, back on forgotten dreams, forgotten dreams, all hope is lost. Um, I would argue that, to me, sounds like a bit of an oxymoron as well, forgotten dreams. Um, I would like to think that um, I wouldn't forget the dreams that I, that I have um, and stay deep into grassy ditches. So we drowse sun dozed, as we can see. Um, the stanza ends with, is it that we are dying? Remember, as I said in part one of these, these three videos, this stanza, stanza five, is almost where the poem takes a turn for the worst in the sense that the soldier has the soldiers have realised that that is what they are doing. So it's a question, of, is it that we are dying? And it's rhetorical because they are. Um, okay, and metaphor on line 26, slowly our ghosts drag home. Obviously they're not. Again, it's up to you what you think this means. Uh, could it be that their souls, the souls have left them? Or is it the idea that they are dreaming of home? Um, usually, or nine times out of ten, home is a place we can go for comfort and safety and usually has positive memories for us. So in this stanza here, I think, um, I think it's my opinion, <laughs> that Wilfred Owen is thinking of the things he has at, at home. So the fire, which looks like a crusted dark red jewels. Uh, what an image. It shows you how valuable home is to him. Um crickets jingle there he can he can even hear the the noises he would hear if he was there for hours the innocent mice rejoice the house is theirs shutters and doors all closed on us the doors are closed important metaphor there on us the doors are closed because actually metaphorically it means that they're going to die it's the acceptance of death and um, the doors being closed is is the acceptance that he's not he's not going to come out of this world world war he's he's going to die there Again, it's also metaphorical in the sense that it reiterates what was said in the stanza above. They've just got no hope now. And, the, you know, this hopelessness is totally um, emphasised in the short, sharp line, we turn back to our dying. So in the, line, in the stanza above, he said, are we dying? And now he said, yeah, yeah, we are. And that, I'm just going to have to accept it and get on with it. OK, if we look here at stanza seven, so we'll come to the end now. Um, stanza seven is the idea that they give up ever thinking about the fires of home. Remember in stanza six, I, I thought Wilfred Owen was thinking about home and these wonderful memories he has of the fire and the mice and the noises of the crickets. Now he doesn't believe he will ever see the fire. He doesn't believe the sun smiles on children. He doesn't believe in the positivity of nature in terms of field and fruit. Remember, we've we've been shown what Mother Nature can do throughout this poem and actually what Mother Nature can do is kill is kill through through the weather. Um important line um is the last line of stanza seven, uh, for love of God seems dying. Um so the hopelessness of stanza six has been replaced here with the idea that there's no God can't even help them. Um even those who have been praying to God realise that that those prayers have gone. Um 
personification, I suppose, in the sense that the love or the the praise they have they have desperately given to God have been ignored. Again, it's this despair, the building up of despair all the way through, and and it's mountain here. And as a reader, we are we are waiting. I think um for someone to die, um as as nasty as that sounds, um. And the final stanza. Tonight, his frost will fasten on this mud and us. And the personification all the way through here has concluded, I suppose, in this capital letter on, on the word his. And I think, again, you know, you can disagree with me if, if if you read it differently, but I think the personification is three different things here. I think the personification is the weather. I think it is God. And I actually think it's death himself coming to get them in. So tonight his frost will fasten on this mud nose. So again, horrible image, the idea that when, when the frost fastens on them, they, they can't escape, that's it, That that's them dead. Um, God, I, I believe it's God as well, because remember he, you know, throughout the poem, I suppose he hasn't helped them either, and death has come to get them. Um, the capital letter H, I suppose, gives it gives death the weather, God, whichever one you think it is, or if you think it's all three, more power, more prominence, uh, more importance, actually. Um, and, and if we think about it, the most important thing, I suppose, in the po- poem, really, is is the weather and its power. Um, shriveling many hands and puckering foreheads crisp. That shows us, as Wilfred Owen's been describing all the way through, that the weather is so deadly and actually is deadlier than the enemy themselves. The burying party picks and shovels in their shaking grasp. Pause over half known faces. Pause over half known faces. There's no time. There's no time for despair. There's no time for regret here. Um, but also half known faces. It's this ghastly idea that when they've been going around, um, gather you know gathering the soldiers to bury, that they know them. It's it's a horrible thought, isn't it? Really. Um, we finish with the metaphor. All their eyes are ice. It's metaphorical because. It's literal, obviously, because they are actually frozen, but it's metaphorical because all their eyes are ice stands for the lack of emotions now. It's emotionless. It also, I suppose, in many respects, represents death, the coldness of death, um, the calculating way in which death and the weather have combined here to, to kill the soldiers. And it is fitting that the poem should end with, but nothing happens. As I said in part one of this analysis, it's very ironic that that sentence. You see, in stanza one and in stanza three, nothing really was happening. The men were unaware that it was the weather that was causing um, the trouble. Um, it's ironic at the end because, but nothing happens. Yet we have just read a poem where I'm arguing thousands and thousands of soldiers have died at the hands of Mother Nature and at the hands of the cold. So actually, a lot has happened. But, but nothing happens reiterates the idea that the men are unaware. They are unaware that they are so exposed to the weather. Um, Okay, I hope this was useful. Remember that the video comes in three parts. Part one is structure, part two is the first four stanzas of language and this part three is the end of language. Okay, thank you.